Thank you, Merrill. And what better way to continue this conversation about the humanities than for me to welcome in three esteemed professors from Montgomery College. First, we have Professor Rita Kronitis. You are the director of the Global Humanities Institute and a professor of English. And next to your, and to your right, we have Professor Mary Fergal. And you are the director of the Montgomery Scholars Program and a professor of history. And last but not least, Professor Marcia Bronstein, you are a professor of English and you're in charge of the Global Humanities Institute's learning communities. Mm -hmm. So I want to thank you for, for being here. And before thank we get you. to the Global Humanities Institute and you, Rita, I'm going to throw this one out to you two professors, Professor Fergo and Professor Bronstein. Mm -hmm. Let's break down the word humanities at its core. Um, if somebody, if, to the layperson, or if somebody's flipping past Channel 10 and they see us talking about this, what would you define humanities as, it, it, it's got to be more than, what does it mean to be human? Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yes, absolutely. Um, in many ways, the humanities, uh, each culture has tried to explore the human condition through language, through literature, through philosophy, through history. And in some ways, it's a bit like this show, actually. You know, the cameramen, the camera women have a perspective on what we're doing. You have a perspective mm -hmm. on what we're doing. We have one. The viewer at home, and each of those perspectives is different. Using the humanities, we explore those differences. Um, it used to be that some perspectives were privileged over others, but over the last few decades, more and more people have come to the table to explore their perspectives from their vantage, their viewpoint. And that's what the humanities enables us to do. Professor Bernstein. Um, and the disciplines involved would be the um, literature, the study of literature, the study of art history, philosophy, um, history, uh, linguistics. Um, I, I wanted to take a slightly different angle and tell you that a hundred years ago, Andrew Carnegie said, that the humanities were literally worthless. <laughs> um, and this debate continues today. Uh, if you, you know, monthly there's something in the Times or the Chronicle about the relevance of the humanities in, and in, in higher education in particular, in an in increasingly vocationaliz vocationalized higher education. Um, uh, however, studies show, especially uh, among employers that the, the skills that the humanities foster, critical thinking, communication, uh, what's called perspective taking, which means you can appreciate the world from deeply from a variety of perspectives, are exactly those things that employers want and not just a narrow mm -hmm. set of skills. Fantastic. Yeah, well, and what the historian can do with that, Andrew Carnegie, <laughs> who I have to leap to defense. <laughs> 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 <You would. laughs> is that if the historian looking at him and, and looking at his poverty would understand why he would later take a very mm. pragmatic approach mm -hmm. to education. Exactly. Thank well, you for that. Well, we, we, have, we're, we have a 30 minute show that we're trying to <laughs> prove or disprove Mr. Carnegie. <laughs> Let's, let's get to the Global Humanities Institute sure, and sure. your mission statement begins with to promote a global perspective. Yeah. And now if anybody knows anything about Montgomery College, it is quite global, yeah. okay? With diversity and not just the skin color, but the social differences that mm -hmm. go on mm -hmm. at, our, at our college. Talk to us about how that could be a perfect catalyst for launching the Global Humanities Institute. Yeah. And how did that, or how, yeah. how did the Global Humanities yeah. get off the ground? Yeah. Well, a couple of years ago, some of us got together to apply for a grant mm -hmm. through the National Endowment for the Humanities. And the purpose of the grant was to bring global perspectives to our college. So this means a number of different things. It means creating courses, uh, changing existing courses, um, it means faculty training. It means changing the culture of the college so that we are, we are more concerned about what's happening in the world and we're thinking and teaching about what's happening in the world. Um, and so we do a number of different things all at once. We have fellowships for faculty, for example, mm -hmm. and Marsha is running one of them. We have um, bring expert speakers. We tap the expertise of our faculty at the college, and we bring a great many events to the student body that make them more aware. Now, global humanities doesn't mean we're going to read the literature of Asia. Right. It means that we engage with the culture of Asia, the texts of Asia, consider our positioning in the world as we study Asia. It's You're a very dynamic process. You're not leaving the discipline process. of literature. 
Absolutely, which is very, very crucial because we really get to know one another through the humanities. I mean, these are the very personal voices that we convey. And I like to say that the humanities are a way of speaking to each other. Okay. Mm -hmm. Very good. And, and beyond our differences. And I'm going to throw this question out. We discussed it a little bit before, before we uh, started this today. But there are two schools of thought here, and you guys can just jump in when I say this. Going to college for a career and going to college to learn. And it sounds so elementary you know, in the definition of those, but it is a very, very wide spectrum of thoughts. Mm -hmm. Just, I guess, uh, talk a little bit about that. I, well, I can speak on the, the study that I alluded to before um, and say that, those, that both of those are actually to fused together, that, that, uh, uh, to, that learning a career must involve learning, learning in, this, in the deep sense that the humanities foster. Um, uh, Eighty-one percent of employers recently um, uh, uh, surveyed of companies of 200 or more people, so several hundred um, uh, company, companies were surveyed uh, w with you know, many employees, say 81 percent said, say, critical thinking and analytical mm -hmm. reasoning skills are important. Uh, Two-thirds say understanding of the global context of situations and decisions are important. So, you know, it's not only the humanities, but it's internationalized humanities mm -hmm. that are considered essential by employers. And also, I would add to that global awareness, awareness mm -hmm. of other cultures, and also sympathy, and I'm, I'm sorry, empathy right. towards those other cultures, which, you know, it didn't use to get articulated so much, um, but, but now it's Now it is. Um, half Half of employers uh, want their employ employees to have foreign language proficiency, yeah. and, and it can't be that you know that half of those companies need them <laughs> to speak it, but it's valued. Of course. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Mary, how do you interject this into the courses and maybe some of the courses that, mm -hmm. that you're you're trying to do this on? Well, in history in particular, mm -hmm. um, my own discipline, it's actually incredibly easy because the emphasis has been so much more on social history over the last few yeah. decades and on looking at the different perspectives of those who are in the working class, those who are female, those who are the, mm -hmm. uh, were often before considered the other. Um, and so to give a specific concrete example, in many of the courses that may be European history or world history, to make sure that it's not a component that's separate dealing with the other, but the other is integrated throughout. Mm -hmm. And you can actually do that very easily because um, you'll find in every culture examples of beauty, examples mm -hmm. of compassion, examples of hate, mm -hmm. examples of strife, and it's actually quite easy. And also how cultures intersect, right? Yeah, absolutely. How they um, sort of rub against each other and influence each other. Mm -hmm. That's part of the whole global perspective. And it, it, can I say ahead, something? Marcia. I would say that it's not only the, this important content that we're talking about, but the teaching methodology. Um, the, your classroom, you need to teach in a way so that multiple voices yes. can be right. heard, right. so that perspectives are, are respected. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, and uh, you know, your class is a place where different perspectives are shared. Um, which which yeah. takes us back to what you said before about we have such a diverse student population. Now it's our challenge to learn how to make space in our classrooms mm -hmm. for those voices mm -hmm. and those experiences mm -hmm. to enrich the teaching and learning experience. Well, our, our 10 minute conversation has suddenly come down to one minute and okay. I'm going <laughs> to give it to you okay. for the final okay. question, Rita. Where does the Global Humanities Institute fit in the learning, in the future learning of Montgomery College students? Do you see it? Oh, wow. Well, uh, I know new, that's a hard question new, to ask when we, <laughs> we have courses. people tell us okay, to hurry. Quickly, quickly. <laughs> okay, so we're creating new courses so that we have new material to teach. We are changing courses so that we have this more global, broader perspective. We are um, incorporating working, service. incorporating service and experiential mm -hmm. learning. We are partnering with nations abroad. With China, mm -hmm. we have a partnership with a university in China, El Salvador, and we're partnering with India soon, so that we can have maybe, well, our goal is virtual co-teaching. And so our students will be working with students in India, for example, in the same virtual right. classroom. Um, things like that. Faculty and student exchanges in the future as well. 
Well, that's fantastic. But I'm sorry I have to cut this short. We yeah, could go for yeah. another hour. But yeah. I want to thank all of you for being with us today on thank Campus you. Conversations. We're going to take thank a break. But when we get back, we're going to rejoin Jason in the studio where he's going to talk about the Paul Peck Humanities Institute at Montgomery College. <laughs> 